So I'm going to meet up with Alan Rabinowitz from SEO Image um, at the baseball stadium again. I guess I got to think about new venues to have these things at. But um, I have a few more scheduled at that stadium as well as my home and other locations as well. So it should be fun. Um, with Alan, I'm going to be talking about SEO, links, online reputation management, and a lot more. So I hope you enjoy it. See you guys soon. Bye-bye. All right, Alan, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Um, so you've been in the SEO industry for over 20 years. Correct, about 22. 22 years, that's before Google? No, well, it's about the start of Google and Yahoo and Direct Hit and a lot of those little search engines that we used to look at where we kind of were doing things like doing links inadvertently. We didn't understand that that was the trigger that Google liked back then. Awesome. We did it because that was the way of the internet. So <laughs> if you were a photographer, you wanted to be found, you found every single photographer you could and you said, hey, I'm a photographer too, can you get, send, send a link to me? And everybody had no trouble doing it back then. Cool. All right, yeah. so before we officially get started, I mean, that was our, our official vlogging <laughs> start, but can you tell people who you are and what you, what you do? Sure, I'm Alan Rabinowitz, I'm the CEO of SEO Image. Uh, we market websites, we do organic search engine optimization, web design and internet marketing. And one of our big uh, specializations is uh, reputation management as well. Cool. And like we were saying, you've been around the industry for a long time. Um, yes. How did you get started? Uh, I got started when I was working in the art industry. I used to illustrate, for, I was a freelance illustrator. And I was trying to get my website to show up on Google for search terms like uh, illustration, fantasy art, things like that. And I did a lot of, read a lot of tutorials online. Uh, I looked at Bruce Clay tutorials and Jill Whalen at that time. And I learned a lot from reading all the information they have, following some newsletters. And then I found people who understood PageRank back when the PageRank toolbar existed. And I saw people that were had a PageRank 8 and realized wow, what are they doing to get that? And I backtracked, I reverse engineered what they did to learn how to do that for everybody else. The good old days. Yes. <laughs> and that was back then, it was like, what's more important, content or links? And back then, I think most people would agree, links. You got page rank eight, nine, you can do whatever you want or rank for whatever you want with little content. Yeah, yeah, I think it definitely made a big difference back then, more so than the content. But Jill Whalen ultimately won out and her advice around content, content, content first, Yes. Content is king, one out against all the link people because now links are important, but probably con you say content is probably more important these days? I definitely feel a content and how you get the content marketed who, you know, some, I think it's a combination because I think Google's always been a popularity search engine. It's always a popularity game. Who's the most popular, right. not who's the most relevant. I've never seen it to be a, a website that has no backlinks rank well. That's totally relevant to the search results. Cool. Some of the names, so you were always part of the, I think you, I've seen your name pop up in the SEO community here and there. You, you Have you gone to the conferences at all? Uh, I did SES many years back. Okay. So I met uh, a lot of people then. I met Neil Patel back then, you know, um, Jim... Uh, Boykin? Boykin. Well, Jim I had known through networking prior to the convention, so when right. I went there, you know, I met him and his group. He had a whole bunch of people then, Stunt Double. Yeah. <laughs> And all those guys. Greg Bozer, Oil Man, all the, all the different people. I didn't, I didn't meet all those guys because I only did the New York one. Okay. Uh, so I met a lot of the New York people back then. Uh, cool. It's a long history. Um, oh, yeah. And you're still in it, which is a lot of people are still are, who have been doing it 20 plus years ago are not doing it anymore. So congratulations for, you know, and you don't even look so gray. So I mean, I'm getting there. <laughs> getting there. So it's awesome. It's and you probably started when you were a kid, I guess. Uh, well, I started in, I guess, I was in my 20s, right? Yeah. I had to be in my late 20s, so. All right, you look pretty young still, so. Well, I'm in my, fi I'm 50. You're 50, you don't look 50, <laughs> so that's good. Um, I started when I was a baby, so I don't know. I was uh, probably like 19 or 20 when I started. Huh? I don't know. What, so what year did you start officially, 19? About 98, 98. I'd say. Okay, cool. 98, I started looking at trying to get my art site up there. You know, you know I was doing a lot, I put it online. Uh, I was working actually. I was actually working for a photo agency back then for a period of time. 
uh, and they, they taught me how to get sites put together, web design and scanning and everything like that. So And, and so you still do the web design, but mostly focused on or uh, reputation management, you said? Or? Reputation management's probably an, an SEO or a two core because they are one and the same. Right. Uh, and we get clients that contact us mainly for SEO and mainly for our, our reputation. So it's those, those two are definitely our core. On occasion, we'll, we'll do web design or pay-per-click and some social media, really mainly to support clients that are coming to us and want to keep it all in one agency. Have you seen anything that's changed in the past you know, six months or so with COVID and your business? Or uh, well, I definitely feel like in the start of it, and back in March and April, people, a lot of people were hesitant to move on. Some people were pausing. They didn't have places to go to. Right. And some of them needed that. So like the hospitality, my hospitality clients, we couldn't do anything with. So they, they, were, they, one of them told me she was having trouble selling coffee to people. We can't even sell coffee. Right. You know, that's, that's tough. Then she's, you know, her, her rent itself has to be 20 or 30 grand a month on 57th Street. Cool. All right. So that's good. But I think business probably has stabilized a little bit. People realize. It's starting to come back now. I'm starting to see more and more people coming and contacting us. More and more people moving forward. Where I'd get a lot of contacts in April and May and people would not move forward. No matter what I did, I just couldn't get them to like pull the trigger on it. They were just still in that unsure stage. And I think now we're seeing a lot of people have moved into more of an online space. Like I had one client that, that changed from being in the office to being virtual with, with services. Right. So people yeah. are adapting. So people, yeah, I, I'm starting to see people adapting because we all realize we don't know when this is going to end. You know, we, we thought it could be gone by now, but yeah. we, we're thinking it could be another year. Funny, so I yeah. think we're seeing that adaption. Are you working in the office or you're virtual now? Uh, we're all, we, we're virtual. I mean, we were semi-virtual beforehand, so. This, it's funny. So yeah. we have this office, about 20 or so people. And when this happened in early, I guess early-ish March, I'm like, you know what? Everybody start working from home remotely, which we were capable. It took no time to do. Yeah. We were all set up anyway. Uh, but I set up the mail forwarding to go from the office to my house, um, and I set the date to October first. Okay, that's what because I mean, you can't you can't set it forever unless you move. Physically. Yeah, yeah, I did that too. I think my my I still could get mail that goes to my yeah, office. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I, I have two locations now. I started a location in Long Island, uh -huh. uh, but you know that was in 2018. We started that, and now we're. Not sure what we're doing with that yet, but it's still yeah. there. I'm stuck in. I'm, I'm sure you are. You're stuck in a lease also. So yep. have it, um, and I have to go check the mail twice a week. Even though half the mail goes to my house and half the mail stays at the office. I don't get why. I guess the post office can't really forward everything yeah. properly. Well, with the buildings I'm in, it, it's been pretty good with them forwarding mail if, if or or leaving it for me if I drive by. Yeah, they the, they leave it. It's in the box, so yeah, not a problem. Anyway, just thought maybe October first would be the date, but clearly it seems <laughs> like it's actually getting a little bit worse now, which is a little bit scary because everybody's back in school. So this is being. I think recorded. we're just noticing that school spread. Yeah, the school spread. So this is being recorded. What's today? September seventeenth. Um, so this is probably out in a couple months, but you know, hopefully when we look back at this. Hopefully there'll be a vaccine and everybody's cured. We'll sprinkle some pixie ducks, maybe pay, pay drag pixie ducks <laughs> over all of us and we'll all be safe. Right. Um, yeah. So let's talk about some of the SEO topics you want to talk about. So I think you want to talk a little about links, no follow, UGC, they're all sponsored, doesn't matter or not. So okay. go at it. Sure. Well, actually, to be honest with you, we've been okay with no follow for a period of time already. We've seen the no follow having an effect probably for at least a year, in my opinion, maybe more. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't feel like, because what happened was Google tried to put something in to, to, to prevent spam. And I think all it did was get people so worried and nervous that they were going to get a penalty because uh, there's been points in time where Google's been very negative and, you know, penalizing websites. So I think that became a concern for a lot of publishers and a lot of businesses to say, hey, anything external, just no follow. It. And that kind of killed the whole point of no follow. So now no follow is everywhere and it kind of doesn't have the intended effect. So now they're trying to do another level, which I think will take a few years to even have a full impact. Um, I do believe that most publishers who are SEO savvy were, are starting to integrate, integrate some of those, uh, but I think it's really difficult to do and I don't see it being a real big topic of conversation. I don't hear people talking you know, about the user-generated content rel, you right. know, rel equals UGC. Uh, UGC. Right. I don't see that coming out. I don't hear people mentioning it. It's not something I hear when we're dealing with developers anybody knows about. You know, they're all like, what is that? Right. So I right. don't know that it's picking up the way they're hoping it would. Right. So I think of just for, um, I guess, for purpose of explaining, about a year or so ago, I think Google said, hey, we're coming out with new, um, I guess, rules around no follow, how we respect it or don't respect it. So crawling, indexing, and ranking. 
Um, they're going to kind of like start maybe treating it as a hint or not and say we're going to ignore it. Um, there's really not so much clarity on where their stance is right now, meaning have they started using it for ranking or crawling or indexing is a question. The policy has changed, but right. they really haven't said so. And you said in your... In your I'm, I'm very hands-on a lot of client and work. It. And because of that, I'm able to see we kind of feel like everything is a, can have an effect now. Even right. people talking about how they're, I was in a, a Facebook group where they were talking about how they could mask, you know, the, the, totally mask it and cloak it. And I'm thinking it's not cloaked, it's there. And I think Google makes its own decisions on what it wants to count and what it doesn't. And I kind of feel there's value in everything now because the nofollow just got so misused right. that uh, we're back to square one until the new stuff kicks in, which will be, you know, if Google keeps pushing it, it'll be a year or so, but uh, I don't see them pushing it effectively. Yeah. Google is not pushing it. Even when they announce it, they're like, you don't have to use it. It's really just, if you want to use it, it helps us out a little bit. I think I was the first one to add a real sponsored uh, <laughs> label on my sponsor links. Just, uh, just why not? Right. Um, but anyway, um, we'll see what happens with that. You think I think everything's working right now. I think that there's there's value to each link, but the value that comes through, whether it has a rel tag or not, is is based on several different factors that only Google will admit to or tell or talk about. I feel like there's a lot a lot of times where if if something's in a sponsored section, it still has value. You know, I think see, Google's looking at different factors and links, even calculating in. Um, affiliate links. I think affiliate links have are calculated uh -huh. into the algorithm, which a lot of people would say that's crazy. But if you go around and you look at what's ranking, and you look at like anytime you do a best this, right? You know, or even certain things like take laser hair uh, removal and go look, and it's all top sites. It's all not, and it's not top sites. It's all articles on top lists. Right. So it's almost like Google's not trusting the product sites and the manufacturers of the devices. They're only trusting. Uh, article, you know, big, big uh, media sites that are blogging about here's right. our picks, wire cutter, and, and stuff like that. And, and half the time, 90% of those links could be Amazon affiliate links. Where back in the day, I don't know if you remember, there was one point in time where uh, I think a lot of the publishers complained that the affiliates were ranking better than they were. And Google made a switch. This is going back probably about yeah. early 2000s. Yep. Uh, I think then Google made a switch to not count people with affiliate links and then people were afraid to even add affiliate links. They were trying to cloak those. Right. So now I think that affiliate links are actually factored in. But do you think it's the, well, there's two things. One is affiliate links from page A to page B passing any signals, meaning passing page rank or other signals. It may not be page rank, but it's a signal, yes. It's, and the second thing is, pages that have affiliate links on them, do those rank anymore? And back in the old days, you'd be like, affiliate pages that have affiliate links to oh, yeah. whatever, say yeah. top air purifiers, air, yeah. air filters, <laughs> which is good for COVID and the wildfires, which were going on, I guess, recently. Um, the top results all, all are like, here's the top five ones from Wirecutter or whatever, New York Times and this and that. Yeah. And here are links, they're all affiliate links to the actual place to buy it, Amazon or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, the question is, is is the New York Times or Wirecutter ranking because they're affiliate links on the page, or are they just ranking because of their own authority in general? Um, and is that link to Amazon that's an affiliate link actually helping Amazon because it's from the New York Times using an Amazon affiliate link is it helping Amazon? Those are the type of ways of breaking it down. Yeah. Uh, so I, what do you think? I do. I actually feel like Google's looking at different factors. Are you an advertiser? Or do you have social links? You know, it calculates, are you legit? It's looking for trust. And any way that you could build trust and affiliate links show trust. I mean, this, this, this company's big enough that they could have other marketers working for them. And when we see that growth in the affiliate links, there's, there's a trigger, you know? I mean, I'd, I'd like to say that we could look at Amazon as a model, but I think Amazon's its own entity and it's, it's, it's hard to look at that as a, as a model. But there's other companies out there and this is to me is a link building factor. If you were to do something with a company that has the ability and the capability of integrating affiliate links, it might be something, a, a possible campaign to consider. I don't feel it's gonna have like the page rank of, oh, here's a backlink on a guest post, or here's a backlink that's earned because you did webmaster outreach and they like something that you're talking about on your blog, uh, or that you became, you know, you put out this, uh, you did a, a Google survey and you built up a really elaborate amount of people that have hit that survey and you've got, a scope of 10,000 or so people, and now you're using that as, hey, this is our data. We we pulled 10,000 people, and this is what, out of those 10,000 people, these are the results we're seeing. Now you're 
now you're giving something out to the community. So I think there's a lot of things that people look at from, you know, different perspectives than, hey, let's just go build a PBN, which I know there's companies that do it and right. do it successfully to this day. I don't like that strategy because they own your SEO. You know, those are companies that once you leave, you don't rank anymore. Right. And I kind of feel it's a shady tactic. Uh, I used to be on the, the grayer side back in the day, Although, but I think everybody was because right. we just didn't know it was spam. Right. You know, we weren't looking at it as- There hey, were no guidelines is, in 2000, right? There so. weren't, there weren't any guidelines and you looked at things as, hey, you know, how are you doing it? And you know, the things I would tell people to caution is widgets. I don't think widgets are looked on. I think they're frowned upon, I don't know why. But if you did, you know, back in the day, if you were designing websites and you gave away free templates, right. you could get smacked today for that and right. it's like, well, you know, it was a process then that we weren't looking at as, hey, this is a shady tactic. Yeah. We're giving stuff away. In fact, I think on Search Engine Roundtable, there's still a thing for like being like, there's still like an archive somewhere on the page. Like, here's your Search Engine Roundtable widget. Embed this on your website, link back, whatever. Yeah. So even back then in the early 2000, 2003, 2004, I even did that, and that was like not frowned <laughs> upon at all. I, mean, I, I had page rank widgets too. Everybody had that. Yeah. We had page rank widgets. Widgets. We did a lot of. Uh, yeah. We did. I hired a lot of designers back back then. We yeah. did a lot of design when we started, and I had a lot of guys put together some beautiful WordPress themes and some even stuff on Blogger and Blogspot. And there's, on you know, they're, it's crazy that you still see them today. So in summary, affiliates are back, widgets are not back. Widgets, I would tell you to avoid widgets. I, I just kind of feel like, I don't know why that they're, it's negative, but I feel like there's a negative from it. And, okay. But I, I feel like it's maybe just not counting. You know, right. they, they're talking about having a different stance, which I think is nice, you know, because back in the old days, it was just, it oh, we're going to smack you, and unless yeah. you're BMW, you're not getting back in. But, but now, which they did smack BMW, and they got, they got back in within a month. Right. But there's other people that were hit for 10 years. Right. I think, especially in the SEO industry, I think those were the people hit the. But hit now the they hardest. just ignore those, which kind of feels now, like. Now I think they're ignoring it, which seems better to me. I'm more relaxed about that because I'm like, all right, hey, you know, if if, if they don't like it, they're not going to count it. Okay, we're not not worried about someone taking our site down anymore, because right. I felt that was a big issue because people were doing that. All right, so what? I mean, I know you wanted to also maybe mention a few key things that help people do rank, that help people do rank in Google. So what are those top? So you know, so for 2020, I think.